Hello guys and this is Scott here and today I'm doing another one of my historic videos for you. This time I'm having a look at the two very similar Argus of 1997 and 2004. Now these two Argus are two very hot, sunny and very thundery Argus. Um, they are notable for some very heavy thunderstorms and flash floods in them and so I thought it'd be quite good to have a look at them today. Now before we get started there's just three things I'd like to say. The first is that the charts that you see in this video come from the historical archive at wetacentral.d um, and these charts they have a chart for every day going back to January of 1871. Um, so basically as I always say if you want to suggest you know these historic videos it can be anything from January 1871 and the second thing is many of the facts and figures that you hear in this video come from Trevor Harley's personal weather website he has detailed information for months going all the way back to the start of the 1900s and smaller fragments of information going back to the dark ages so that is a brilliant resource and finally the third thing is I'm just going to say this uh, now that at Christmas, it's still a bit away, but at Christmas I'm going to be doing another two of these historic videos. Um, the first one will be of the winter of 2009 to 10, um, and then the second one is a surprise. I'm not going to tell you which weather event that is. So the first one, 2009 to 10, I will most likely upload on the 23rd of December. And then the second one I will upload the next day on Christmas Eve. So just letting you know that now. But basically now, let's get on with the August of 97 and 2004. So we're going to start on the 1st of August 1997. And this is a very hot month in fact. It has a Central England temperature of 18.9 degrees Celsius. Which actually makes it the second hottest August on record just behind... 1995 um, and really because of 95 that it's actually quite a forgotten month if this was um if we was to actually see a repeat of this month i think it would really be looked at as a classic summer month but because of 95 it is somewhat forgotten um, and just to prove really how hot it is we actually record 19 consecutive days over 27 celsius so it really is, that is really quite a big statistic. So there we are on the 1st of August and we start off a little bit on the cool side with a bit of a westerly flow there. But that doesn't last long as, at all because as we go through the 2nd and into the 3rd of August, the Azores high ridges into the country. Um, as I say in many of these hot summer videos, the Azores high is always an omnipresent feature in these hot summers um, and at the start of August it's very present as it builds the heat for the thunderstorms later on so as we go through into the 4th of August it basically stays hot dry and sunny but then as we go through into the 5th of August 1997 you can see we just bring a bit of a trough of low pressure into the southeast sorry the southwest of the UK so that actually brings some thunderstorms to um, Cornwall some, and this also brings a couple flash floods as well. But it says we go through into the 6th of August that the storms become a bit more widespread and we record 55 millimetres of rain in a thunderstorm in Tivington. So that is really quite a torrential storm that. And those go through the 7th and into the 8th of August. And then temporarily around the 8th we turn it hot and sunny again. So again we have temperatures, you know, going up into the high 20s, low 30s. So, you know, a very, very decent spell of weather this. And into the 9th of August, again that stays the same. And then on the 10th of August, this was actually the very day I was born actually, we record a temperature, a high temperature of the month of 33 Celsius in Worcester. And we actually bring some heavy thunderstorms up through northwest England during the evening hours. So again, just the month turning gradually more thundery. 
And then this is where it really all starts to kick off now, because as we go through into the 11th of August, basically we're bringing up that hot south to southeasterly wind there from the continent, and at the same time we're bringing moisture in. And so we basically start to get some deluges now. And also um, this actually brings some very unpleasant nights around this time. We record some pretty, pretty warm and humid nights at this point. Then as we go through into the 12th of August, you can see that we're, bring, we're actually developing a bit of a trough there over northern France. And as we go through the day on the 12th of August, that basically develops into a very organised cluster of thunderstorms. Or if you want the, um, the more posh meteorological term, it's called a mesoscale convective system. <laughs> And that moves north over England and Wales up during the daylight hours on the 12th of August. So this brings some spectacular lightning and some very heavy rainfall as well. And then overnight 12th and into the 13th of August that moves up into Scotland. And again we just keep that low pressure out in the Atlantic. So again we're bringing moisture in and we develop more storms again on the 13th of August. And then, really, as we, get, as we get through to the 14th of August, we bring high pressure through again. So, again, we turn it very hot and sunny once again into the 15th and the 16th of August. There we have a very warm, southerly flow into the 17th and the 18th of August. Well, then, as we go through into the 19th of August, we've got another little feature developing out into the Atlantic. And as we go through into the 20th of August, that brings more thunderstorms into the West Country. So again, some brilliant lightning and some very heavy rain. And that goes through into the 21st and the 22nd of August. And then again, we bring another little feature through on the 23rd and into the 24th of August. And again, that brings some more thunderstorms into the 25th and the 26th. And then on the 27th of August, we actually bring quite a deep low in there. So we actually get a bit of a southerly gale there on the 27th of August, as well as bringing up some more hot southerly winds. So, you know, again, we bring those, we bring more thundery showers through the country and more heavy rain as well. And then through the 28th and the 29th, we start to ease off a bit on the temperatures then. So we go down a bit more towards average. But again, you know, still slightly warmer than average, but, you know, much cooler than it has been. And as we go through the 30th and into the 31st of August, we bring another little trough through. And then, basically, it turns a bit warmer again, but that takes us into the start of autumn. So, it's a very, so there you can see, it's a very decent summer month, actually. And I'd say, actually, August 97 probably winds over 95 if you ask me just because of the thunderstorms but fast forward now seven years to the 1st of August 2004 and this um, is slightly cooler than 97 with a central England temperature of 17.7 celsius but it is even more thundery than 97 and actually the storms in this month are much 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 more destructive um, and actually the heavy thunderstorms we see in this month actually make it the wettest august since 1956 and the most thundery august since 1960 so it really is an amazing month this august 2004 but also quite a damaging month as well so there we are on the 1st of August 2004 and you can see we've got a bit of a ridge there through the country from an area of high pressure over Scandinavia. And if you have a look at the colours over the pressure chart you can see we're bringing hot air into the south. So we have temperatures into the high 20s and low 30s through this first part of August. So as we go through the 2nd and into the 3rd of August we bring some hot weather up and overnight second into the third there we actually bring a bit of a feature through the country so this brings some heavy thunderstorms in the early hours of the 3rd of August 
And then as we go through the 4th and into the 5th of August, you can see we actually develop a bit of a coal there over the country. So we have high pressure to the northeast and the southwest, and thundery areas of low pressure to the northwest and the southeast. And basically, we're in a big battleground situation there. So we have warm, sunny days, and then, you know, the odd little storm triggering off later in the day. And actually, this starts to bring up some very hot weather as we go through into the 6th of August because we start to get some very hot days and very uncomfortable nights. As, as we go through the 7th and into the 8th of August, we actually record 31.5 Celsius at North Hall, which is the highest temperature for this month. And actually overnight 8th and into the 9th of August, we actually record a very high minimum of 21.7 Celsius at Marham in Norfolk. So we get some very uncomfortable nights in this and coupled with the humidity, if you don't like, you know, sticky heat, this really isn't the month for you. It's almost a tropical month this actually, August 2004. And then as we start to bring some very severe weather then as we go through into the 9th of August, because you can see we've got this very deep area of low pressure out in the Atlantic and this is bringing a bit of a trough through the country on the 9th. And this brings some torrential rain northwards during the 9th, 10th and 11th of August. So on these, basically between the 9th and the 11th of August, we record 150 millimetres of rain at Aberfelby. So it's a very wet period. So there's the chart for the 10th and the 11th of August. And you can see... We have that hot, thundery plume coming up from the south, which is fueling that weather front, producing copious amounts of rainfall through this early to middle part of August. And then as we go through to the 12th of August again, we bring some very heavy thunderstorms through once again, and those go on into the 13th and the 14th of August. And then by the 15th of August, you can see we've got the Azores high ridging into Europe again. So this is bringing another wave of tropical air up into the UK. So this is going to this is going to feed one of the more severe flash floods we see in the UK. Because as we go through into the 16th of August 2004, this was Monday the 16th of August 2004, and this was the day of the flash flood at Boscastle. The very notable flash flood and I know a lot about this because it was the case study that I did in school in geography to death um, we did so much on Boz Castle um, and basically the day started off very warm and sunny but at around 12 o'clock some massive massive thunderstorms developed over Cornwall and this actually dropped now can you believe this figure 100 millimetres of rain in the Boscastle area in just the space of one hour. So that brings, you know, a good two months worth of rain in just an hour. And basically what that done was that all went into the rivers. Basically, the river burst its banks and flooded the valley and the village of Boscastle and its surrounding areas. And, as a, and there's some pictures of Boscastle there. You can see the rescue helicopter is just, you know, trying to rescue anything it can from a completely overwhelmed city. Sorry, an overwhelmed village, I should say. And there's another one again of just from up the side of the valley. And you can see the village is just completely devastated. And actually, rather miraculously, no one was killed in this event. So that's a, that's a good sign to hear. But the lives were changed by this as it just completely destroyed the village. It took years to get it back to what it was. Um, and that's not it, I'm afraid, because as we go through into the 17th, the 17th of August, we bring more heavy thunderstorms through the country. And into the 18th, we get some very heavy storms in Scotland this time. And actually, there's a landslip near Lockenhead in Scotland. And so this actually covers several cars and actually blocks the A85 motorway. And that's just because the ground is so, so saturated. And as we go through the 19th of August, that trough then just sets up shop over the country. 
So it's building into hot air. So again, that's just fueling some violent thunderstorms as we go through the 19th and into the 20th of August. And on the 20th of August, we record 23 millimetres of rain in one hour at Hazel Rig. So again, some more very severe storms as we go into the latter days of the month. And as we go through the 21st and into the 22nd, we build, we get basically a day's respite from the Azores High there in Europe, which just built, which just gives a warm and sunny day on the 22nd of August. But that doesn't last because then, again, as we go through into the 23rd, we bring yet more heavy storms from another Spanish plume, you know, very hot, very thundery. And, you know, it's at that point now where it's really causing concern. But that goes on into the 24th, 25th. But by the 26th of August, we finally start to calm it down. Because we bring the Azores high into Europe. And then actually we lose the warmth then as we go through the 27th of August. Because we actually bring quite a deep autumnal storm into the north of Scotland. This actually brings a bit of a summer gale. But this actually starts to bring a lot cooler air now, so we lose these severe thunderstorms at the end of the month. And this also explains why the central England temperature is a bit lower as well. And that goes on into the 28th and the 29th of August, so again we're losing those storms and we're gradually turning the weather more and more autumnal. And that takes us into the end of August, so the 30th and into the 31st of August, we get a bit of a northerly there, but high pressure actually comes in for the start of September 2004, so that brings a bit of a welcome relief. So, that um, ends the look at the August of 97 and 2004. They are two exceptionally thundery months, um, especially 2004. Um, and obviously I hope that showing you this video it hasn't brought back bad memories if you don't like storms or you were, um, you know, flooded. Um, so thanks for watching this video and remember to stay tuned for the historic videos that I'll be doing at Christmas. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.